Sierra and I are shopping for fabric for Mickey ears. We're at Joanne Fabric. Hmm. Oh, I like this one. We should get that. I think I have this one. Oh, I like that one. That's the one, Sierra. So tell me if you like one. That one's cute. Should I do it yours with that one or no? Maybe. Hmm. Ooh, I like that one. Hmm. That's a fabric. Ooh, look at this one. All right, we're gonna keep shopping and we'll see you at home. All right, guys, so we picked a lot of cool fabric. Thank goodness for gift cards. And we're gonna be on our way home and I'll show you all the fabric we got. Hi everyone and welcome back to a jolly good life. So I had quite a few requests for the Mickey ears. So that's what we're going to do today. It's going to take a little bit of time, but the payoff is definitely worth it. The supplies that you will need are Mickey ear templates. I got mine off of Auntie Tay, she has a website. But if you do look it up uh, on printables, there's a million of them. But these are the ones that I used, were hers. They're free to download as long as you're not selling her, her uh, pattern. The next thing you're going to need, obviously, are headbands. So I bought 14 of these headbands for, I believe it was under $12, 11 something. So I'll see if Scott can put a link to it in my description so you guys could check it out if you want to. But I think it's a good, pretty good price. They're very comfortable. They're not tight. I tend, for some headbands, it hurts my ears, right above my ears. But these have been really good so far. They're loose. Maybe because they're cheap, but whatever. It works. You're going to need fabric. Something that you choose to use for the bow. And fabric that you want to use for your ears. I bought a quarter of a yard of each fabric. So I bought a quarter of a yard for the ears and a quarter of a yard for the bow. You're definitely going to have a lot of leftover from the bow. But I bought a quarter of a yard for the ears. You're also going to need cardboard. Some Any kind of corrugated cardboard would do. I have used old shoe boxes in the past, like the Nike boxes. I have also recycled Sierra's old uh, trifold science boards. Instead of throwing it away, I kept it what I use. You're going to need, for this project, you're going to need four cutouts. And you'll see why in a minute. But you will be using four of them for one pair of ears. You're going to need some fabric scissors as well as regular scissors to cut your cardboard because you don't want to use these scissors to cut your cardboard. Y'all know they'll ruin it. You might need some ribbon. And that is if you choose to finish off your ears on the inside of the headband. And I just use a 5 8 of an inch ribbon. You could probably use a little bit narrower ribbon if you choose. But this is the one that I use. 5 8 of an inch. You're also going to want to use a Sharpie or something to mark your fabric. I know my grandmother used to sew and I know they sell some fabric chalk or something. I remember fabric pencils, but I just use a Sharpie because I do not have 
the, the one that's meant for fabric. And you're also going to need it to trace out your ears onto your cardboard. Of course, you're going to need your glue gun and I used about two and a half glue sticks. So just have three glue sticks per ears. You might use more, you might use less, but I used about two and a half glue sticks for this project. You are going to need some kind of trim for your ears. You're gonna need a, a little, a couple inches more than a half a yard. I'm not good at uh, yards and all that, but I just asked a lady for three inches more than half a yard. <laughs> and that's exactly how I asked for it. Because when I made these, I only, I had only bought half a yard. And I know you can't really tell from here because obviously that's the one that I finished off. But if you look real close on the inside, I didn't have enough to finish. So from here to here, it doesn't have any trim. From a distance you can't tell, but I was about an inch short on each ear, so I just asked for two to three inches more than half a yard the next time I bought the trim for the ears. You're also going to need some kind of batting. So I like to recycle and I already had this Christmas uh, snow, I guess they call it buffalo snow. That's what I've been using for my ears. I'm sure any kind of batting or polyfill or anything is going to work. But this is what I've been using. And last but not least, you are going to need some sort of a lightweight cardboard. As you can see, I used this. And this is actually from my scrapbook paper, the big sheets. I just took the back cover off and that's what I used for this. And this is going to be the important part in all of this. This is where a jolly good life does it a little bit different than everybody else. So let's get started. Let's have some fun. Watch your fingers with the glue gun and let's get going. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to the computer and print up some ear templates. Now they are all over the internet. Uh, I got mine from Auntie Tay. She has AuntieTay.com. So if you go to her site, it's uh, auntietay.com. You'll see she has uh, free downloads for your template. That's where I got mine. I saw a bunch of other ones. For those of you who may not have access to a computer or a printer, you can also use just a, this is a 20 ounce cup with the circumference or the width. A 20 ounce cup, this has got a width of uh, three and a half inches. You can use three and a half or four inches. Her template is actually four inches for the fabric. So if you could do three and a half, that's fine. That is the size that her fabric is on her pattern. She has two for sewing and then one for fabric and then for your foam. I am not going to use the one for the foam. The only one I will be using is the sewing and the cut and trace for fabric. The one that says fabric and the one that says sewing. Those are the two that I'm going to be using. Okay, so I've cut out the sewing. So I've cut out the sewing pattern. This is what's going to go inside the ear to hold the size. All this is is a trifold board that a long time ago Sierra made a project and I don't like getting rid of stuff so this is what I'm using. Any kind of sturdy corrugated cardboard would be fine. And as you can see I traced a bunch of them. 
All I did was get my little sewing pattern. I put it on and just to get as much as I could out of the board, I did that. So trace it and then cut it out. Here are all my cutouts I have. I made a lot. So these are the template that says sewing. Here's the sewing. I just traced it and cut it out. Up until this point, everything is pretty normal as far as I've seen every other YouTube video about making ears. But as you know, I try to make things a little easier for myself and I thought that this would be easier for you guys as well. So this part I haven't seen anybody else do, but I do think it makes it easier for me. So this is what I did. So I was trying to think of the easiest way to do this. Now I have the fabric pattern. So I went ahead and took my fabric pattern and I went out about another inch from that. Doesn't have to be perfect and you'll see why in a minute. So I went even bigger than what the pattern is. And then here where it curves, I just kind of went down like this. So if you could see that, it kind of looks like a light bulb. What I'm using here is just the back of my scrapbooking paper. This is just the back of that. So it's a little bit heavier than cardstock, but it's not corrugated. This is gonna be my pattern. So you just need to cut this out. Doesn't have to be exact, don't worry, as long as it's close to a circle or close to round. Honestly, this is the most difficult part because you're making yourself a pattern for all the rest of your ears. Now, after I got this, I got this part that says sewing and I put it on the inside. I pretty much tried to center it and then I folded this in half. Once again, doesn't need to be perfect. Now what I did was, this is where I changed it up a little bit from other videos that I have seen. Only because I thought it made sense to do it this way. Okay, so now I folded this pretty much in half. And I've traced half of the circle. You will see why I did this in a minute. But now I'm going to cut this. It's a little bit off, so I want to make it as much, as even as I can. So that's a little bit better. So now I'm going to just cut that out. I'm going to go inside of it just a little bit. Okay, so this is what I am left with. This is the other one I made. As you can see, this one's a little bit wider. I don't really think it makes a difference as long as you have that hole in the center and you've gone bigger than you need to for the fabric. And as you can see, we'll still have some extra around the outside for the fabric. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use this and we'll go to the next step. Now you have your pattern. Okay, so now at this point you have your two ears that you've cut out that are going to be on the inside of your ear. Those were the ones that said sewing. And you have your pattern. Now, this is where I think this comes in really handy. Every other video that I've seen just tells you to kind of guesstimate where you want your pattern. For example, this is the one I'm going to be using. 
If you want to use it here, you could, but it you don't really have enough at the end here. By doing it this way, I can see exactly where I want my picture to be. When I was trying to make it the other way, as other people showed, and they did a great job, if I were to use just the pattern, it's really hard for me to picture where exactly that is. Some of you might do just fine with it. I just find it easier to do this. I can see where my picture is gonna be and I can see that there is plenty of room here for my fabric. So I'm gonna take my Sharpie and I'm gonna go a little bit larger than this. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect only because you will be hot gluing this part down. So you really won't even see it. Okay, there you go. Now just use your fabric scissors and cut this out. While I'm cutting this, I will say one thing. I used a quarter of a yard of each of the fabrics. That's just what I bought. I bought a quarter yard and you have some extra of fabric. I will, however, say that if you have a certain pattern, for example, this one or my Steamboat Willie one, make sure that you notice while you are at the fabric store, for example, when you're at the fabric store and let's say you want to use this one. Now, this picture where she's slapping Mickey goes along the whole length right here. But guess what? If I want to center it, I don't have enough fabric to take to be able to get this. So just be aware of that when you're buying your fabric. Same thing on this side. There she is. She's slapping them here. But look how close it is to the top. So I, once again, I can't do it on the top. So, so I will not be able to use this picture because it cuts off here and it's too close to the edge here. So you might want to buy extra fabric, a little bit wider depending on your print. So I'm just gonna use the pictures that I can actually see well, that I have plenty of space. So I'll probably use two of her kissing him and then two of the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace these and cut them out and then we'll go to the next step. While I'm cutting this fabric, I also wanna mention that you might want to try to leave a strip of fabric either on the top or the bottom. See right here, this strip where I cut my ear, I still have a pretty good size strip of fabric here so that when I cut my other ears out, I could still do that one. And I could still do one down here and have a good size strip of fabric along the top. And you'll see why that's important in a minute. Now you can see that on this one, it's a little crooked, but right here is really the bottom of the ear. So as long as you have a little bit of space to play with, let me show you. What's gonna happen is we're gonna put stuffing on here and this is the part we're gonna fold over. So you do have enough playroom in here. I just like to make it bigger so I'm safer because I did cut some fabric 
before and it was too short and I couldn't use it because there wasn't enough left for me to fold over it in hot glue. All right, so now you have cut out all your ears. You've placed your design where you would like it. Also remember, you do not want to cut, well, maybe you do, but please be aware, because I've done this too, when you are cutting your ear, make sure that it's facing the right way. Unless you want your picture to be upside down, it's very easy to make the mistake and cut it like this. Or like this which goes to show that now your ear the pattern is going to be upside down on your ears so you want to make sure you cut it like this with the picture where it's going to be in the right direction that you want it all right so now for the reason that i mentioned that you want to keep a strip of fabric on the top if you can not everybody chooses to do this so now if you choose to cover your headband, as I did for these ears, you're gonna wanna take your headband. I just used a large piece of scrapbooking paper. I took my headband, I put it on the paper, and then I rolled it. So as you can see, I have extra here and I have extra on either side. When I actually did it, I gave myself a little room up here and I traced it. I just traced it all the way down. And then I went ahead and cut it. Now this is my template for the fabric to cover the headband if I decide that I want to cover it. Some of you may want to leave it black or blue or whatever color you buy your headbands in. So now I'm going to take my fabric and since I did make a little wider than I needed it, if this would have been a little bit too short that's fine because I know that this is more than wide enough to cover this headband. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to trace this and I'm going to cut this out. On this one, I am trying to cut the purple Sharpie off right at the line. So the reason I'm cutting, trying to cut right on the Sharpie line is if it gets wet, then it won't smear. The purple won't smear all over. Okay, so now you have your two cardboard ears and you have your fabric. So what you're gonna wanna do is get your ear. I guess this is preference, but I just have, I think that would be good enough for my ears. I don't need them to be super fluffy. Let's see, without smushing it down too much, it's kinda hard to gauge because everybody's hands are different sizes but you can gauge on how fluffy you want your ears and i just put it on here i'll put it on the cardboard side so you can see it better there you go doesn't have to be exactly on the edges and it's not too fluffy without smashing it down it fluffs up to probably about an inch thick after you make your first pair, you'll see how fluffy or not fluffy you want them. I just get a little bit of glue. It's just to hold down the fluff. Then you simply place your pattern where you want it. Flip it upside down. And what you're going to want to do is start slowly gluing this. Try to make it as flat as you can. So you just go around the edges. That's why you wanted that extra, the extra fabric. Because the first few that I tried to make, there really wasn't enough extra fabric around the edges. So honestly, I was trying to glue 
this much. Like it, it was just too much. It was too hard to do. So that's why I went ahead and made it so much bigger. I think it's better to be bigger and save your fingers. So all I'm going to do is start, once again, I'm going to double check, make sure my pattern is where I want it. It's in the center. I'm going to go ahead and start gluing this around the edges. And watch your fingers. And you want to do it pretty tight. As you can tell, I am pushing down on the ear here in the center. I'm going to continue going around the edges and gluing all of this. Okay, I I do want to mention, try not to make this too bulky here. Try to make it as flat as you can. I'm going to go ahead and get some glue and these little edges that I think I could flatten out some more. Because what you're going to do is this side, you're going to do the same thing to this side. And then you are going to stick them together. This one I'm going to fold in like this. And I'm going to make it as tight as I can. Okay, so you have one of your one side of one ear. You're going to do this four times. So you're going to need a total of four. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one and then I'll show you guys the next step. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys what you can do when you're going to glue the back of these. On this one, I pulled it really tight. So you can kind of see the curve of the ear. This one, I did not pull so tight. I should have pulled it tighter. So when you're doing the bottom, make sure that you pull it tight enough where you can see the curve of the ear when you're pulling it towards yourself and before the glue sets. This is not a make or break mistake, but this is the way you want it to look. And of course, on each of the ears, you want to leave the tail on one of them. So this is going to be the front and back. Next step is we are going to glue them together. So get a generous amount of glue. You don't want it oozing on the outside of your ears. But you do want a good amount. Put them like a sandwich and then just Hold some pressure on them. Make sure you line them up good. I still have black spray paint under my fingernail from our paint pour. When I was spraying the table with the spray can, I was spraying it black. Okay, so now we have our ears. Now we're going to go ahead and into the headband. If you were interested in how to do that, just start at the very end. Take your time and just glue along the edges and keep rolling it and glue. So just watch your fingers in this part. I said I did make it wider than I needed to. Some of you might want to make it 
a little narrower your pattern after you make a few then you'll see what you prefer to do i'll just do it from this side so you guys can see the main goal here is to make the outside look nice not so much I'm not really so much worried about the inside of the headband. And I also found that if I fold in the ends first, it does give it more of a finished look. If you do find that your fabric is way too long, all you got to do is get your scissors and snip it. Okay, so at this point you can either leave it like this or you can finish off the inside by putting the ribbon of your choice along the inside. Go along the inside and glue the whole way around. I'm gonna fast forward that so you can see how that looks. I'm just measuring it right now. I'm going to cut it a little bit longer than I need it, not by much. And right here I am using five, five eighths of an inch. That's the width I chose. You could probably choose it a little bit narrower depending on your headband. Okay, now you have the inside of the headband. So you may ask, be asking yourself, why did you have the extra tail on the ears. As you remember, we folded one side in, but I left this little tail on the other side. And that is going to be one of the ways that you reinforce your ears on to the headband. So as you can tell, I'm just going to take that and fold this under and we're going to glue it. I'm going to cut this off so this is not going to go over this side, but it will help reinforce the ear. So now you have to place them on the headband where you see fit. I like to put mine about two, two and a half inches apart. So, probably a little closer. Yep, that's about two and a half inches. It's not going to be exact. I'm going to take my little Sharpie here. And this is going to be pretty much the center of that ear and the center of this ear. I want to put a lot of glue here and quite a bit here. I'm not going to try to put too much on this end right here because it's inevitably going to get cut off. So. Put a lot of glue here in the center. Just gonna hold that on there for a little bit, a couple minutes. I cannot emphasize enough, please, please, please be careful with this hot glue. You definitely do not wanna burn yourself with it. Holding it like this, putting pressure on it, and I'm going to cut the tail off the part that I don't need. I could even cut a little bit more. That should be good. I'm gonna do this other side. Here's the center. I'm gonna put a good amount of glue on the inside of the ear. 
And I'm going to put some glue here on the tail. I have done it many times. I'm pushing it down. And at the same time, I am pushing on the ear. So as you can see, I'm pressing this way and pushing against it with my thumb. This is probably the better of the two methods. You have less of a chance to burn yourself if you do it like this. I'm still going to hold it on there. Now it's probably safe to lift it. And I have a big tail left over on this one. Okay, a couple more steps and we will be done. All right, now it's time for the trim of the ears. As you can see, you could tell the seam where we put them both together. No worries, that's where this is going to come in handy. I'm just going to go ahead and start down here and glue it along the seam of the ears to cover the seam. I'm going to go a little bit more than I think I'm going to need. Not by much. And I'm going to go ahead and glue the seams of the ear. I will say this, guys. I bought a half a yard not knowing how much of the trim I would need. So I did buy half a yard and I was about an inch off of each ear. So I needed about another, whatever half a yard is, maybe a couple inches bigger than that. A couple inches longer than whatever half a yard is. So if you are gonna get trim for your ears and you're gonna want it to go all the way down here, which is what I wanted, So this will be the back of the ears. These will be the front. I am going to go ahead and glue this down some more. But once it's on your head, you won't be able to tell any of that. I'm going to go ahead and do this side now. So at this point now we have our ears constructed as you can see that's how I did it last time I actually folded the ears under first and then I put the ribbon so it covers it I think that would be a better choice put your ears on first then put the ribbon because <laughs> I kind of did it backwards. I got ahead of myself because I was trying to make the video fast. But yeah. Put your ears on first. Then put your ribbon. So it looks like this. Nice and finished. And not like that. Although this still isn't bad. I'll still wear them. Doesn't matter to me. But this is a much more finished look if you put the tail on your ears first and then put the ribbon. Okay, now for the bow. Bow is super easy, no sew. I will tell you that it is super easy. My friend Cargo619, she has a great channel. And I actually got the idea of making the bows from her. Because the way I was making my bows was a lot harder. Then I would just take the fabric. If you see my older video, of my Jack Skellington ears. I just kind of folded it up, but Cargo 619, she has really cute crafts and stuff. Just to tell her that uh, Jolly sent you over, if you go and check her out, she does like some great iron-on 
ideas, Mickey ideas for shirts and stuff. All right, so you're gonna use the fabric of your choice for the bow. You're gonna need an 11 inches wide by eight inches high. If you don't know how big that is, it's about the size of a sheet of paper. I made it a little bit bigger, but basically 11 by eight. This is just a regular piece of copy paper, standard. So you're gonna put with the good side facing up. So this is the sparkly side on my side. This is the dull side with no glitter. You're gonna put a line of glue here and fold it as close to the edge as you can. Be very careful once again with the hot glue. I know I keep saying it, but those of you who have been burned know what this is like. And with this glitter, it's kind of like a mesh. So it will go right through when you fold it in half and burn you. So you gotta be extra careful. I'm just gonna take my marker and do it with that, my Sharpie, because I don't wanna burn my fingers. And you can see some of the hot glue is on here, which is good. Because guess what? If it's on here, it's not on my fingers burning them. Okay, it should be cool enough to touch, which it is. Okay, so now very carefully, you're going to want to turn it inside out. So take your time here. Flip it like a tube sock. There you have it. Now what you have left is a pretty much a tube. Now you're going to want to fold it in half, find the middle. I'm just going to put the middle along this line here so I remember where it is. And you're going to put a line of glue here and fold this over. Then you're going to put another line and put the next one to meet up with this. I just noticed it's been a couple weeks since I haven't worn my ring and I still have the indentation of the ring. I guess after 26 years of wearing a ring, the dent stays. <laughs> okay, so now you have this. Now you're gonna wanna take a smaller piece. It's about, it's not very even, but the whole point of this is gonna be the center. So you're gonna wanna fold it over and fold it over so that you have a strip like that. So this is about, it ranges probably starting on this end, probably two inches to an inch and a half, pretty close. This is probably way longer than what I need it to be as far as this length right here. Fold it over. wasn't quite quick enough on that one. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in there. And I'm gonna do the same thing now on this side. The point is to try to get about a half an inch of width of a ribbon. You can go as wide or as narrow as you want. But I try to do it from like a half inch to an inch. Just tapping it down with 
my marker until it cools down enough that I would know I'm not going to burn myself. Okay, so now you have this. This strip right here would be enough for two bows. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one in half so I can use it for my next set of Mickey ears because I know I don't need it to be that big. So this is almost five inches. That one is five inches. Now this was the side that you glued. This is going to be the back of your bow. You're going to take it like this and, and you are going to fold it like an accordion. Right down the middle. The more you do it, then you'll see how you like your bow. This actually looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue in between each accordion and hold it there for a second. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue there, a little bit of glue there and hold it tight. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put a little bit of glue here and a little bit of glue there. And I am squeezing pretty tight. You could probably see my fingers are turning white from how tight I'm holding it. I just want to make sure that this holds. Now this is the front side of my bow. At this point you can choose whichever side of the bow looks better to you. This one's a little bit more puckered. This one I like more. As you can see, I needed to hold that a little longer while it dries. All right, so this is the front side of my bow. This is the side that I glued and folded over. This is the side that I want to use. So I'm going to put it face down. Once again, this top that's facing me is the one that I folded over. This is the good side of my bow. I'm going to put it face down. So now all the bad ends are facing me. And I'm simply going to put some glue here in the center and then fold these over. To make and I'm going to put some glue right along the edges. I'm going to do the same thing to this side. Then I'm going to put a little bit of extra glue here. So this, this flap stays down. It seems like a lot of steps, guys, but at the end of this video, I'm going to show you pretty much how I cut a whole bunch of these patterns as far as the ears. So they're ready to go. I already have my pattern. That was out of the way. I cut my fabric. Now it's just putting the stuffing on the ears and assembling them. Okay, so there's my bow. All I need to do is attach my bow to my ears. Some people do this and some people don't, but I like to put a little extra glue right here. One right there. Extra support for the ears as well as for the bow. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So all I did was put a little bit of glue right there, as you can see, on the ear itself and on this side as well, right there, right underneath the edge to hold it in place. Now I just got to go through and take all the little glue strings off. I like these ears. So what did we learn today? We learned that you want to glue your ears on first and then finish it off with the ribbon. If you choose, I went without this ribbon in the center for a long time. I just had the ears themselves and that was good with me, but then I figured I might as well finish it off and put that nice black ribbon on the inside. All right, guys, I know this was a little bit long, but I hope it was helpful. I hope you guys are able to make many Mickey and Minnie ears. I have so much fabric. I'm going to show you now at the end of this video, me cutting a lot of the fabric for future ears to come. I want to thank everyone for joining me. Please don't forget to check out Cargo 619. 
super sweet lady. Let her know Jolly sent ya. And I'll see you next time with another craft here on A Jolly Good Life. Bye.